HelloFresh takes the guesswork and the extra hassle out of planning and preparing delicious meals for dinner. America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh gives you over 40 recipes to choose from each week. And then your farm fresh pre-portioned seasonal ingredients arrive at your doorstep with simple instructions to help you feel like the master chef of your kitchen. And did you know that HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout? HelloFresh has been an awesome addition to our household's dinner routine. We all get involved and cook together following the pictured step-by-step instructions. It's a fun quality time and the meals are delicious. Give it a try and see for yourself. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 having it all and use code 50 having it all for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, to get 50% off plus free shipping, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 having it all and use code 50 having it all. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, it's Matthew. And before we jump into the episode, I just wanted to share a little bit of love that I have for the Having It All Blueprint course. Because I've been in the space that you might find yourself in right now, where you're feeling frustrated. Maybe you're feeling a little bit lost or confused, like you don't have direction or you aren't really clear on your purpose, or you don't know why you keep starting and stopping things in your life. And you feel like you're kind of caught in this cycle and you just keep repeating the same things again and again. I've totally been there and I've seen the impact that that has on my health and on my relationships, and on everything that I experience in my life. And what I have done in the Having It All Blueprint is pour in the frameworks and the systems and all the different mindset shifts and changes that I did on myself, first and foremost, that I lived and have walked for so many years that have helped to create a huge transformation in my life. And I put all of that in the blueprint, And the result of me living everything that I teach in the blueprint is that I attracted an incredible queen into my life. I took really bold steps in my work and with entrepreneurship. I reached all new heights in my fitness and in my health. I became a father and fully embraced the role of raising a little girl. And I helped to create an amazing community of people who are there to love me and support me and to fill me up. And all of that is because I walk the walk. And so if you've been feeling any of that frustration, any of that overwhelm, any of that that feeling of just being uninspired in your life, and you're ready to walk the walk, then the blueprint can be an incredible tool for you. It can help you do just that. And if you're interested, you can go to matthewbivens.com slash blueprint to learn more. And if you're not, if this isn't the timing for you, that's okay too, because the timing has to be right. And so when the timing is right for you, it'll be there. Thank you so much for giving me those couple of minutes. Let's now jump into today's episode. Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's up with your powerful self? (laughs) Welcome to the Having It All podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens, and I am so stoked that you're here with me on this beautiful day to partake in a really authentic and honest and bold conversation about what it looks like to have it all, about living an abundant, loving life. And I got so much energy today. The topic that we're digging into is really great. I'm going to be talking about some of the biggest mistakes that I see and that I've made when it comes to self-work. When it comes to you know personal development, self-help, whatever you want to call it, working on yourself, there tend to be some mistakes that are made. And so in this episode, I'm going to dig through a bunch of them. And I think it's going to be awesome. You're going to walk away with a few things and you're going to probably see yourself in some of these mistakes like, dang, I'm doing these right now. And if that's you, then you'll have a chance to, to see that 
and course correct. So I'm excited to get into that and uh, we're gonna have a great conversation. Let's kick things off with some magic. Magic is our ability to influence self, others, and life in an empowering way. And if this is your first time listening to the podcast, then welcome, welcome, welcome. And you might be thinking, magic, well, isn't that that thing that like they talk about in Disney World or I've seen somebody pull a rabbit out of a hat and all that? Yes, and I'm giving you a brand new context for magic in this podcast. So again, magic is influencing yourself, other people, or life in an empowering way. And you're doing it all the time. You are creating magic every single day, but you may not necessarily be recognizing it. So a really, really simple example of magic could be you listening to this podcast, right? If you normally are, let's say you're, you're in the car and you're normally listening to some, I don't know, some, some talk radio stuff that doesn't raise your energy or just some, some gossip show that, you know, is just not doing anything for you energetically, spiritually, consciously. And you decided today that, you know what, I want, I want some a different, different energy getting into my earbuds. I want something else. And you chose this podcast, well, then boom, right there, that's you influencing self in an empowering way. And so I've got a hell of an example for you all today. It's about to get intimate. It's about to get real intimate. And I love that. You know, I love, I love uh, being bold within myself to share things like this with you all. And so I'm going to share some magic that went down last night. It has to do with my self-work practice, particularly around connecting with sexual energy, connecting with myself in an intimate way, connecting with Sarah in an intimate way, and in this case, connecting with other people. And uh, yeah, your eyebrows are probably like, whoa, what? What are you about to get into? Yeah, it's about to get real. So <laughs> I've mentioned this in a couple other episodes that Sarah and I practice this thing called OM, orgasmic meditation. And if you are unfamiliar with OM, then you might want to pause and go do a quick Google search, OM, orgasmic meditation. You can look at a website called One Taste, I think it's .com, uh, and they, they give some great information about, about OM. Um, I've done some episodes on it, like I said, and without going into too much detail about the practice, um, it's all about moving sexual energy and connecting through uh, clitoral stimulation. So I'm going to leave it like that. It's about clitoral stimulation. It involves two people, and that's the very, 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 very top level uh, of what OM is. And so Sarah and I have been practicing orgasmic meditation for a number of years now. Um, we've done, I don't know, dozens and dozens and dozens, uh, maybe close to 100 reps. Nah, no, not close to 100, but a lot of OM reps. And we, have some, we had some friends that were uh, interested in learning more about OM. They want, you know, they've done it a little bit with themselves, uh, but they wanted to kind of experience the own practice, like experience other people. So we invited them to come over and to watch us ohm, to watch Sarah and I ohm. And so what's, there's some pretty cool things about that because, you know, I have not done an ohm where there was people watching before. And so initially, when this idea was thrown out there for us to have friends come over and watch us home, I was very much thinking, oh, this is great, you know, um, I'll be able to, to teach, you know, and this will be for them. This will be for their benefit so that they can learn something, so that they can experience something, and then potentially take this back into their own practice. And that's sort of how Sarah, uh, kind of the context she had as well, except for her, it was more like, I'm going to be on display, you know, and that's not a great feeling to have. So... I'm thinking that it's about them and I'm going to teach. And Sarah's thinking it's about them and it's her being on display. And so we, we proceeded with uh, inviting our friends over. And before they came over, Sarah and I talked briefly about some logistics. Um, normally, when Sarah and I own, we are nude. We are totally naked. And that for us is how we can really get into our power and get into our flow and really get that connection going. Um, between the two of us. And you don't need to, to, to be nude for, for OM, for orgasmic meditation at all. Um, in fact, on the One Taste website, when you learn about how to do it, they only recommend or they only talk about the, you know, the woman having her pants off. Everybody else or you know, the person who's OMing and, and the top half of the woman are clothed. Because it's really not a, a sexual 
penetration sort of practice. It's not about penetration. It's not about fellatio, cunnilingus, any of that stuff. Um, but it is intimate and it is sexual in that there's you're moving sexual energy through the clitoral stimulation. So you don't have to take all your clothes off, is my point. But Sarah and I choose to. That's how we own. That's how we've done it for, for many years. However, when we were talking about our friends coming over, we discussed keeping our clothes on. And for both of us, it was out of fear. It was because being nude in front of these friends was outside of our comfort zone. And so we decided to keep our clothes on. And that was where that conversation ended. Now, the magic in all of this was that several hours later, it connected with me. It connected with me. And I said, wait a minute, that is not beast mode at all. There is no growth for me in keeping my clothes on during this ohm and for believing that this ohm is for the benefit of our friends. There's no growth in that for me. There's no healing in that for me. That is me completely you know, releasing my, my, my co-creation responsibility and participation in all of this by me taking that back seat, by me playing small, and by me just like throwing my hands up and saying, this isn't for me. And I'm so grateful that that connected with me because the magic in all of this was for me to go back to Sarah and say, hey, you know what, Sarah? We need to do this ohm naked. Me being in my beast mode, I'm naked. You being that badass goddess, you're naked. Us staying in our fears and wanting to be considerate and you know just playing within our comfort zone, there's no growth in that for us. And Sarah totally got it, totally agreed. And you know we both influenced ourselves to show up so boldly, so vulnerably, and so powerfully in that ohm. And what was great is when our friends came over and we talked for a little bit and we got down to the practice setting up the space, it was just like, all right, let's go. And the clothes came off and it was just, it was effortless. It was comfortable. It was natural. And we did the whole ohm and we were in the nude. And then we even sat and talked to them afterwards. You know, everybody talked about what they experienced. And I talked about what, what, what I experienced across those 15 minutes. And Sarah talked about what she was experiencing. And we shared those fears. We talked about, you know what, like I was, I was kind of in my, my, I was a little scared when, when we were talking, when we were setting this thing up and, you know, I told Sarah, we'll stay, we'll, we'll keep our clothes on and all that. And like, it was just, it was just open and raw and honest. And again, we're in the nude as we're discussing all this. And like, that is magic. That is freaking magic. So I'm definitely inspired by myself and by Sarah to just be bold and vulnerable, step out of our comfort zone, remind ourselves that we are creating these experiences. Like I'm creating this own experience and this growth opportunity. Other people might be impacted, yes, but I'm the one who's creating it. And to not forget that because it's so easy to be like, oh, I'm doing it for someone else. I'm, I'm, I'm attending this for somebody else. I'm here to support them and totally miss the fact that, no, you've actually created this. You've played a part in creating this. So see what's the juice in it for you. Where's the growth in it for you? Where's the healing in it for you? And not forgetting that, you know? And so that's my magic. It's, it's awesome. I've felt so empowered and I felt connected with Sarah. Uh, just the, the folks who got a chance to see us, Ohm, you know, they got a chance to see us be powerful and being bold and authentic. And I know that they've been impacted by it. So that is some magic. Yes. <laughs> HelloFresh takes the guesswork and the extra hassle out of planning and preparing delicious meals for dinner. America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh gives you over 40 recipes to choose from each week. And then your farm fresh pre-portioned seasonal ingredients arrive at your doorstep with simple instructions to help you feel like the master chef of your kitchen. And did you know that HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout? HelloFresh has been an awesome addition to our household's dinner routine. We all get involved and cook together, following the pictured step-by-step -step instructions. It's a fun quality time, and the meals are delicious. Give it a try and see for yourself. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50HavingItAll and use code 50HavingItAll for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, to get 50% off plus free shipping, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50HavingItAll 
and use code 50 having it all. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. All right. So now is your opportunity to think about magic in your life. What magic have you created recently? And let's think about magic that has to do with stepping out of your comfort zone. Let's focus on that. It could be in a big way or it could be in a small way. You know, it doesn't have to be on the same scale as, as me doing a nude ohm. It can be anything that has to do with you stepping out of your comfort zone. Maybe you uh, ordered something from a restaurant and it arrived and it wasn't exactly the way that you wanted it. And normally you would just take it. You would just take it and eat that cold steak or whatever. But this one time you were like, um, you know what? No, this is not what I ordered. I would like it changed, right? And you stepped out of your comfort zone. Whatever it is, think about where you've influenced yourself to step out of your comfort zone. I want you to press pause on this episode and think about it so that you can really connect with the fact that you are freaking powerful and magical and you're creating that magic all the time. So pause now and then we'll flow on to listener love. Okie dokie. Let's go. Let's get into some listener love. And I really love this part of the podcast. You know, I get to, to just send that loving energy back at you because you're the reason why this whole thing goes. You're the reason why we hit a million downloads and why I've been doing this for three years. And it's just, it's about you. It's for you. I get something from it too, which is really awesome. That's, that, that's the definition of a win-win right there. You know, both parties are, are impacted and uplifted. So today's listener love goes out to actually a group of people. Because last week on Instagram, I made a post where I said, hey, send me your episode ideas. What do you want me to talk about? Whatever it is, I'll talk about it. And I had a bunch of people who responded in comments and direct messages and emails. So I want to shout out the folks who responded. And uh, this is no particular order. And um, yeah, I'm just super, super grateful. So here we go. Thank you to Lewis and Krista and Cater and Zach and Derica and Melissa and Sam and Courtney. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for responding to my Instagram post, for sharing your ideas with me about episodes. I'm, I'm so grateful you took the time to do that. And I'm definitely going to be uh, creating some new episodes around all of your ideas. And they'll probably come out in the next week or two. And uh, it's going to be awesome. And I'll probably do like, like back-to-back you know, published days, part one, part two, back-to-back days, because there's so many, so many great ideas. And if I missed anybody, it was not intentional. It totally wasn't intentional. Um, and I'll be responding to everybody who did submit something. So you will hear from me. But thank you. Thank you so much. Sending you so much listener love. And I'm just really grateful and appreciative. If you would like to submit any ideas to me for, for shows, for episode topics, uh, or maybe you have some feedback you want to give me about the podcast, or maybe you just want to say, hey, just want to say what's up, then please, please, please hit me up. I would love to connect with you. You can hit me up on Instagram, Matthew underscore Bivens. You can also hit me up on email, mattcbivens at gmail.com. There are two T's in Matt. And uh, shoot me an email, shoot me an Instagram direct message. Instagram is my favorite because when I open up my DMs on Instagram, it's they're all from you. Like They are all from you. Hundreds and hundreds of messages that are all from you. Whereas when I open up my email, it's like hundreds of emails that are from everybody else and the whole world spamming me. And then I'm like, oh, I got to make sure I get back to, you know, to, to you who've, who's emailed me. So I prefer Instagram, but you can hit me up on email as well. It's all great. I just want to connect. So connect with me. We'll have some great conversations. All right. I got nothing to plug right now. Normally I plug something like the blueprint or something, but if you want it, it's there. Go check it out. And let's just get into the episode. So this one's cool. Um, I'm going to share with you, how many do I have? I got seven, seven big mistakes. Um, They're in no particular order. This isn't like the the top mistakes or anything like that. This is just seven big mistakes that um, I see people make all the time when it comes to just working on yourself, when it comes to, you know, self-help, quote unquote, personal development, quote unquote, whatever, whatever it is, just like that inner work that you're doing to better yourself, 
to to you know realize your potential to connect with your greatness all that stuff there are mistakes that people make time and time again i've made a bunch of them and i see them happening all the time and this post is actually inspired or this episode is inspired by sarah we were talking today and and she was like you know i i see you talking about some mistakes and then we just kind of flowed from there so i'm like oh thank you babe this is great so here are a bunch of mistakes again in no particular order All right, let's do this. The first mistake is that you are a content glutton. You're a content glutton. That means you are a type of person who just reads all the shit. You just read all the different self-help books. You read everything by Eckhart Tolle. You read all the blogs. You listen to podcast episode after episode after episode. You watch all the TED Talks. You just consume. You consume all of the content, but you're not doing anything with it. You're not putting stuff into practice. There's a lot of cerebral activity, but there's no massive action. There's no stepping out of your comfort zone. If that's you, then yeah, that's one of the big mistakes. And people do that all the time because these days you can get so much content and it's a lot of it's for free. It's right there at your fingertips, right? Like you could go into your iTunes and type in, you know, abundance and you'll see my show and a bunch of other shows And we all have a bunch of episodes and you can just spend hours and hours and days and days and months and months and years and years and years and years and years years just consuming content but not going anywhere. You aren't raising your consciousness in a significant way. You aren't expanding your horizons in a significant way. You aren't moving your comfort zones and growing because all you do is reading and watching and listening. If that's you, if that resonates, that connects, then look at that, you know? Because here's the thing, you can get so much further by going deep in one topic, in one book, on one podcast, and really truly applying it, and and taking massive action, and living it, and being it, you will go so much further by just focusing on that one thing and going deep, rather than going broad and consuming all the information, because action is where stuff happens. That's where the growth is. It's not in reading about it. You cannot learn to swim by reading books on how to swim. It doesn't work like that. I mean, you can, you can just sit there and read all the books. Sure, you can watch other people swim. But the only way you learn how to swim is you got to get in the water. And not a bathtub. You got to go in the fucking pool. You got to jump in the deep end. You got to go and swim out in the ocean. You got to go in a river and swim against the current and experience all the stuff. That's where it happens. So... One of the biggest mistakes is that you're just a content glutton. Yeah. All right? In this episode, by the way, like I'm not going to give you, and here's what to do next, right? Because you know, you know what to do. <laughs> if you're making this mistake, just do the opposite most of the time, and that's what you do. You know. So hey, if you're a content glutton, quit reading all the stuff, quit listening to all the stuff, and start applying. Go and take massive action. That's what you do. All right. The next mistake is you're a surface dweller. You are a surface dweller. Now, what that is, that's a person who focuses on the hacks. Let me just get the new hack for self-confidence. Or they focus on the strategy. This one strategy will help you attract the man of your dreams. And they're the people who just stay on the surface. And they just jump from thing to thing. New strategy, new process, new tool, new hack. And they bounce and bounce and bounce. And you know they see, oh, that blog article is promising X, Y, and Z. Let me go check that out. Oh, this magazine talks about if I just do this, this, and this, I'm going to get what I want here and here. And you just do that. You stay on the surface and you totally neglect or ignore or turn your back to what's underneath, the foundation. It's like that picture of the iceberg that we all know of. And the tip of the iceberg is where a lot of people like to hang out. The hacks and the strategies and all the, all the fun stuff is the tip of the iceberg. But the body of that iceberg... That's your solid foundation. That's living a life according to principles. That's setting and holding standards. That's true self-love. That's keeping your commitments. That's trusting yourself. That's having guidelines for your life. That's knowing what your values are and aligning to them every day. All of that stuff makes up that powerful foundation. And once you have that, it allows you to then do the different hacks and the strategies and to actually see something 
manifest that is empowering and lasting. Because you can read a book and do the hack and experience the change for a day or a week or a month. But it won't be sustainable. It won't last. You're going to end up falling back into your old routines and your old habits because your foundation is rotten. There's nothing, there's holes in it. And what happens if you try to build anything on a crummy foundation? It falls, it sinks, it's unstable. Like, I'm going to build a patio in my backyard, a real simple patio. And I'm watching all these videos on how to do it because I'm going to do it myself. And they all talk about the most important step with building this little patio is your foundation. It doesn't matter if it's a, a wooden patio or a stone patio or brick or if it's raised off the ground or whatever. It's all about the foundation. That foundation has to be solid because whatever you put on top of that foundation, it's then impacted. It might wobble a little bit. It might lean to one side. It might totally fall over. It might sink if the foundation is off. So if you're a surface dweller and you're just focusing on the things on the surface and yet your foundation has holes in it, then guess what's going to happen? Nothing that you put on the top is going to, it, it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's going to fall over. It's going to crumble. Eventually, it will because the foundation is off. So what do you do then? Well, you don't focus on the hacks. You don't get caught up in all the hacks. You go in and you do the real deep inner work to see where are the holes in your foundation. You know, if you have extreme jealousy in your relationship, then a blog about five great date night tips is not going to do anything for the long-term health of your relationship. You got to go focus on the thing that's on the, in the middle, on the inside, that, that extreme jealousy. You know what I mean? So if you're a surface dweller, then just recognize it. Understand that, yeah, it's a mistake and that you're not going to have sustainable, healthy, empowering you know, results that last a long time that get you at an upward trajectory. It just doesn't happen when that foundation isn't there. So look at your foundation. Identify the gaps. If you need some help, find somebody who's going to be able to help you identify the gaps. That's a coach or a mentor or, or anything like that. And work on those gaps. That's what you want to do. Work on your foundation. Build the strongest foundation you possibly can and then work your way up from there. That's how you do it. All right. Let me get a sip of water. That was, that, that got me, give me dry mouth. <laughs> All right. So the next self-help mistake is that you're an extreme dieter. Extreme dieter. What I'm talking about is having that extreme dieting mentality. The extreme dieting mentality is going really, really deep into something for a short period of time and then inevitably falling off. It's like you get swept up in the hype. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I'm, I'm on the grapefruit and tuna fish diet and I'm going to go all in for like 45 days. Grapefruit and tuna fish, that's all I'm going to eat, 45 days because this is going to change my life. It's actually related a little bit to the surface dweller. You know, because the hacks and the strategies are what you get caught up in with the extreme dieting. I'm going to get real, real into this thing, but you go deep, right? And that's where, that's where you screw yourself because you're like, I'm going deep. I'm fully submitting to this thing. And I'm really, really going in. But the thing is, you're focusing on stuff that's still on the surface. You aren't focusing on the things that are foundational, right? Go all in on principles. <laughs> yeah, if you have an extreme dieting mentality about self-love, holding standards, letting principles govern your life, you'll be okay. <laughs> you will. It's just not as glitzy and glamorous and you don't get immediate results. There's no, there's, no, there's no immediate satisfaction by doing that. That's a long game and that's why people don't like it. You don't want to invest a bunch of time in this stuff. You want to get that quick result that the extreme diet will promise. If you do this for 45 days, if you eat this garbage, if you eat this tuna fish and, and grapefruit for 45 days, you're going to lose all the weight. It's going to cleanse your body. Your skin's going to brighten up. Your hair's going to glow. People are going to love you. And the person of your dreams is going to walk in the door and say, I would love to marry you. Those are the promises of the extreme diet. And so, listen, if that's what you, where you're at right now, you might be in the middle of an extreme diet. Recognize that. Recognize that. Are you placing too many expectations on this one thing? Are you expecting it to transform your life? It might if it's something foundational and powerful. It won't, probably won't, if it's something on the surface. So if you have that extreme diet mentality, just recognize it. 
in the way that you know is you can look back and say, have you jumped from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing? Like you're all about cold showers right now. You're a cold shower, cold shower. Every, every day you take multiple cold showers because you think that's your ticket to creating the life that you ultimately want. Or maybe you're bulletproof coffee. That's it. If I just drink enough bulletproof coffee in the morning, I'm going to be able to have the focus and the energy and the stamina to do everything that I need to do in the day. And that's what it's going to be. And you just jump from thing to thing to thing. Those things are great when you got a solid foundation. So this one and the previous one are sort of connected. It is Ryan here and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere. And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. All right. The next mistake is that you are on your pedestal. What that means is getting holier than thou. That's where, like, you pick up a couple tools. You've you've grown in some ways. You've you've seen things where, like, a, a, an area of your life where you were in some sort of ineffective space, and now you're more effective at it. And what you do now that you got these new tools and you've got a little bit of growth, you look back and you judge others. You look down on others, or you say, "Hey, you know what? I've done this growth." Now, I want this person to come with me. And so you try to change other people. It's like once you learn something, you got to go and change other people. And that, that desire to change people comes from that place of judgment. It comes from you being on your pedestal. And this happens. This happens a lot. Because sometimes you might read a book or you might begin down some path and see some immediate results. It happens a lot of times. Let me tell you, like you can jump into the blueprint course and just start working on values and go into the first, the very, very first section. The first video has you answering a couple of questions and you can have aha moments just by answering the first questions in the first video on the first section of the blueprint. And then you think you know something and you're like, oh, wow, I got this now. And then you can, it's, it's just easy to start judging others. That's what happens. That is something that happens. I've seen it happen with other people. I've seen it happen with clients. You know, I've seen it happen with friends. It's just, it's what we do. We can, we can gain these, these tools and this knowledge and then now we think we know something and you start to, you know, like I'll give you an example. So, oh man, five, five or so years ago, I was maybe six, I don't know, whatever, um, learning about principles. And one of the principles that, that I really, really connected with was everything is energy. When you connect with everything is energy and you really, you know, it clicks with you, what it gives you the access to is understanding. Because you, you know that, every, that everything in the universe, from our clothing to our bodies to the food to ideas to the light coming out of the light bulb in the room that you're in right now, is just energy. If you zoom in close enough, if you get down to the atomic level, all of this is simply energy. And so... I, I loved hearing that. I connected with that. You know, that, that, that works with my brain. That idea works with how I view the world. And one of the consequences of that idea is that you can look at language and you can release judgmental language, right and wrong, good and bad. Like there is no right or wrong. That's just a label that we put on it. You know what I mean? And so what happened with me is that once I understood that principle and started to to you know, practice identifying examples and things like that, I then started to feel some type of way when I heard people use good or bad. And I started to judge. Oh, they just, they just aren't conscious. They don't have these principles. They're not living a principally centered life because they're using the word bad or they're using the word negative. They're saying negative people or whatever it is. 
I I used like uh, there was a period of time I vividly remember this like I was watching the news and the news would just talk about bad and po- and positive and negative and all of this stuff right and wrong and I just found myself being judgy. That's what happens. We learn something, you learn something new, some new principle, some new paradigm, some new belief, and now you start to judge other people who haven't got it yet, who haven't figured it out yet, who aren't using it yet. You learn something new about nutrition and dieting, and now you judge other people who are living the life that you used to live, eating the things that you used to eat, because now you know something. That's just one of the big mistakes. And there's no humility there. There's no humility. So what ends up happening is, yeah, you learn a little bit of something, but the lack of humility, boop, it's going to drop you right back down. Eventually, you're going to drop right back down to you know a lower level of consciousness because all that judgment, it's going to impact your life in so many different areas in so many different ways. So that's the fourth mistake that I see. It's just you, you stay on your pedestal and you judge other people. So how do you shift that one? You know, practice humility. Recognize that everybody, there's no, there's no final destination. It's everybody's just on their path, on their journey, doing the best they can with the tools, the understanding and awareness that they have. And that it doesn't serve you at all to hold people in that space of judgment. And any judgment that you have is simply a reflection of yourself. Like you are projecting your judgments onto others. That's what I was doing, and that's what we do. Yeah. All right, the next mistake is that you're doing it for somebody else. You're doing your self-work, your, your, your fitness, your exercises, your reading conscious material, all of that stuff, you're doing it for somebody else. This happens a lot when we're in a relationship. We wanna save a relationship. And so they say, I need to work on this. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go work on this. They may not even say it directly, but you believe that if I work on this, they'll stay or they'll be happy or they won't be mad at me, right? There's a difference between they'll be happy and they won't be mad at me, but they both a lot of times can inspire your decisions. Or maybe you're doing it to impress somebody. There's somebody that you want to attract and you know they're into you know, meditation and yoga. And so you're like, I'm going to get into meditation and yoga. And you're doing those things that are for the other person. It might work in the short term. At some point, it's not going to work anymore. It's only going to get you so far. And that's definitely something you want to check. Why are you investing your time and your energy into whatever it is that you're putting it into to improve yourself? Why? Is it because you truly want it? Or is it because somebody else told you to? Or because somebody else expects you to? Or because you're hoping to catch the attention of somebody else? If you have a coach or a mentor and they're giving you things to do, you know, they, there's, there, this, this relates to one of the, the, um, the upcoming mistakes. But it's so important that you think about things for yourself and do them for yourself, do them for your own reasons. At some point, it's not going to be enough for you to do things for other people. It, you always hit a wall with that. You always do. So reflect for yourself and connect with the reason why you're doing something. If you're doing it for somebody else, recognize that, yeah, it might work right now and it might be working and maybe it's worked for some period of time, but that's going to end at some point. It's going to end. And you're never going to get as far doing something for somebody else as you will doing it for yourself especially when you really dig in and go deep into that level of mastery because that because playing for mastery means you are going to hit some walls. You are going to hit some obstacles. And they might be some big freaking obstacles, right? They might be really, really tall or they might be things that you got to endure for a really, really long time. And guess what? It won't be enough for you to do it for somebody else. Like you won't be able to endure whatever hardship is coming because you're playing for mastery You're not going to be able to endure it if what's motivating you is another person. Even if it's like your kids. I'm doing this for my kids. Great. At some point, you'll be like, eh, that's not worth it. I'm going to fall back. Yeah, it happens all the time. What's much more powerful is for you to be making these decisions for yourself. It's for you to be choosing powerfully for yourself. You might need to start with doing something for somebody else and then recognize, okay, now I need to shift this internal, right? Maybe that's where you're at and that's just your starting point. That's okay. But take a look, 
think about why you're doing this. Why are you working on improving yourself? Who is it for? If it is for somebody else, see how you can then turn that and bring it back inward. That's really where your power lies. When you're doing something for yourself, that's when you can truly, truly connect to your greatness, when you're doing it for you. So that is a mistake that I see all the time. All right, I got two more. And these are these are great ones. These last two, um, oh man, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna get into them. I'm not even gonna like hype them up. <laughs> the, the second to last one is that you think you know some shit. You think you know some shit. What this mistake is all about is that after doing some work on yourself for several days or weeks or months or maybe several years, you believe that now you know something. Like you've gained some knowledge and now it's like, oh, I got it. I have figured this stuff out. I know how people work. I know how relationships work. I know how the world works. I know how the universe works because I did this course and it taught me a few things and I feel great and I feel empowered and now I feel like I know something. It's awesome to feel empowered. It's wonderful to feel enlightened. And what keeps that going and what keeps the upward spiral of your growth and your healing is humility, is recognizing that, you know what, you really don't know anything. You understand new things, but knowing can be very dangerous. When you know something, that's like you plant that flag, boom, I know this to be true and nothing will ever shake me off that. Rather than, I understand that this is how things work. Given, you know, my experiences and and the knowledge and the information I have in front of me, this is what I understand. But I'm open to, to understanding anew. That's a much more powerful place to be in. Because you can constantly be going, doing your upward spiral by being in that space of of understanding. But that knowing is tough. You know, and like, what do we really know? You know, this, 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 this universe has been around for billions upon billions of years. And you maybe have been around for 30 or 40 or 50, 80, 90. What's, what's the oldest a person has ever lived? 120s? What's 120 years versus 13 billion? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck do you know? But it's just so easy. Our egos can get so inflated when we read a book and we connect with the information, which is great. It's wonderful to connect with the information, but then recognize that, okay, I've just scratched the surface. Let me pour in a little bit more. Let me continue learning. Let me continue learning rather than say, oh, I know something now. I'm I'm complete. Here's something that my coach told me that I'll always remember. And I, and I love this. And when I first heard it, it was like, man, this, I don't want to do this. He was like, when it comes to all of these, this, this self-work that you're doing and learning all these tools, spend three years exploring, asking questions, being curious, and gathering tools. Then spend the next seven mastering them. And then come back to me and we'll talk. I was like, what? It's about 10 years. 10 years of collecting tools and mastering them. And then at that point, you can start talking about you might know something. So unless you spent 10 years being very, very intentional about mastering some tools or some beliefs or some paradigms or whatever, mastering them, not just I read Seven Habits 15 years ago and then when Matthew mentioned it again, I opened it up a second time. Oh, it's been, I've been reading this book for 15 years. No, (laughs) that's not mastery. Mastery is that something becomes part of your DNA. Like it's something that you can recite or you can do with your eyes closed when you're in deep REM sleep. It doesn't matter. You've mastered it. You've put in your 10,000 hours, like Michael Gladwell says. Like you've mastered this thing. Once you've done that, okay. Now you can, you still don't want to go around thinking that you know some shit, but you know a little bit of shit after you've mastered it for 10 years. So if that's you, great. If you haven't gotten your 10 years of mastery, okay then. Humble yourself. Continue learning. Continue learning about yourself first and foremost. Continue exploring yourself. Keep absorbing that information. 
So that's one of the big mistakes that I see. And it's like, wait, we've been we've been working together for several months, and now you now you know some stuff, and then you know people want to say, okay, I got this tool, and I'm gonna go now, and I'm gonna like you've you know I'm gonna go and save my relationship, or I'm gonna go and and do this thing, and it's like, great, you have new tools, and that's what happens. That's what I said before. It's like you could you could pick up some new tools and get some new you know, be enlightened in some way, have your aha moments, have your breakthroughs, and they're wonderful. And then after that, you feel like, oh, I got this. Let me go. Let me go out there. And yeah, I got this. But what almost always, 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 always happens is you get humbled in a very big way. And you get smacked down. Like life is going to smack you down. Like I can't think of any examples right now. I wish I had some examples of movies because I know I've seen this in movies where somebody goes and they learn something. It's like, you know, they learn how to, how to, a new, you know, I don't know, oh, man, I wish I could thought of some movies, but you've got some movies out there where a person has learned something, their coach or their master or whatever has just taught them something. They're like, I got it. I'm going to go now and apply this. And then life smacks the shit out of them because they thought they knew something after just picking up this brand new tool. They have no reps in, in, in no experience in actually repping it or very, very little, but they feel like they know something. And, you just end up getting humbled. And, you know, sometimes that, that being humbled like that is what you need. But it's also a mistake that you don't have to make if you simply humble yourself as you're going through the process. So that's the second to last one. And the last mistake that I see all the time is that people just don't think for themselves. You don't think for yourself. You find some guru or you find some influencer, or you find some thought leader, and something about them resonates, and you just take their advice blindly. Anytime you take someone's advice blindly without thinking for yourself, it's just a recipe for disaster. It's so important that you think about what's being fed to you. Like, think about what I'm sharing with you right now in this episode throughout this this whole podcast. Think about this for yourself. Don't just agree with me. Like, think about it. Use your brain. Listen to your intuition. Actually listen to your intuition. Listen to that inner voice. You have an inner voice and it's speaking to you. If you haven't repped listening to it, then you aren't going to be able to hear it. Or if you don't ever take the time to to intentionally tune out the rest of the world, then you aren't going to hear your inner voice. But when you take what somebody is telling you and you just go with it, that's that's what hap- that's how you end up becoming a uh a content glutton. You just take one person's thing and you go and you take the next person's thing and you go and you're just constantly jumping and jumping. There's a lot of people out there who are going to call themselves gurus and call themselves influencers and call themselves thought leaders. That's just the culture that we're in right now. It makes money. Yeah, people make a lot of money by calling themselves a guru, by writing a book about something and now all of a sudden they're an expert on it. You know what? Anybody can publish a book. Anybody. You could publish a book <laughs> like right now, you can go write something and self-publish a book and call yourself an author. Be careful. Be careful. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. I'm such a fan of of going out there and learning things. I absolutely am. But being intentional about what you learn and then being critical about what you learn. Ask questions about it. You know, poke some holes in it. If something can't withstand you poking a few holes in it, then uh, you probably don't want to build your life off of that idea. I'm just saying, you know. And so it's just so important that you just, you just, you, you, you you couldn't, you take in information, you really listen to that inner voice that will will guide you. It will tell you your intuition, your gut will tell you if something is going to serve you or not. But if you are just so disconnected with it, then it's going to be very hard for you to hear. When your inner voice is being like, uh, no, don't, don't, don't listen to that person. Don't listen to that person. That's not going to steer you in any, any powerful direction. Go this way. Like if you don't have reps in that, then it's tough. You just be like, oh, they said I should do this. And I heard them on a podcast one time and I saw that they have their own YouTube channel and their Instagram has over 1000 people. And so I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to figure out what they, I'm going to do what they tell me because they've got their life figured out. That's what we do, right? That's what social media and all this, all the internet has really helped us to do is to, is to believe that everybody out there has got their shit figured out except for us. Let me tell you, I've totally been there. 
I've totally been there where I look at people and I'm like, man, that dude has just got it going on. Like, look at him. He's got the clothing right. His face is all manicured and his hair is done nice. And damn, he got like, some nice cologne on and he's got a big smile. And look, there's people that like him and I bet you he's really smart at his job and he's got all this shit figured out. That's what we do. And then, oh, if he told me to do this, I would go and do it. If he said, you know, this is, this is your strategy to win at life, I will just do it. So think for yourself. Think for yourself. Like, just be careful. <laughs> just be careful. And anytime somebody calls themselves a guru or an expert, just be careful. You know, guess what? There's no cookie cutter solution to all this, to improving your life, to the self-work. There's no cookie cutter solution. There, there are no two people who created an awesome life exactly the same way. Yeah, think about that. There are no two people who, who followed the exact same path, did the exact same things, ate the exact same food, had the exact same habits, built the exact same relationships to get to any sort of life that, you, that, that, they, that they might say is a happy, fulfilled, quote unquote, successful life. That's not how it happens. Everybody walks their own path. Everybody does. So you just got to be careful to not try and fully adopt another person's path, another person's idea, another person's brain. Because you will never be able to recreate exactly what that person did. You've got to go about doing it yourself. So it's cool to look and see what other people are doing and to take great ideas when your gut tells you, yeah, that's a great idea, and to apply them. But then you got to put your own funk on it. You got to do it your own way. You got to do it your own way. And so that's one of the biggest mistakes is just doing it another person's way, not thinking for yourself. All right, that's my list. That was seven big mistakes that people make when they are embarking on their own self-work, on their own self-improvement, all of that stuff. So if any of those mistakes resonated with you, then just do some reflection and think about them and say, hey, you know what? I've been making this mistake. Yeah, that's a pattern of mine. I jump from thing to thing to thing. Or you know what? I just kind of hang out on the surface. I really don't go deep into my foundation. Or damn, I've just been judging people. Like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize it, but I've been judging people. Well, now you know. All right, that's, that's the, first, the first step to all of this stuff is just awareness, being aware of it. And that's one of the beautiful things. That's one of like the human gifts that we have, it's human endowments. Like we have self-awareness. And now that you're more aware, you can do something about it. And that's about all about being proactive. Now you can go be proactive and, and do something about those things that you might be, you know, those, those mistakes, those, uh, those traps you might be falling into. So, I, uh, yeah, this was great. If, if you have any feedback on it, if you have some other mistakes that you make or that you see um, or you've, you've read about or whatever, you want to share them with me, then connect. That'd be cool. I'd love to hear them. Uh, I know there's a bunch of other things out there and, and other pitfalls to avoid. And, you know, if I get enough, you know, maybe if I, maybe I'll do another episode on this if, if there's enough interest, but um, just connect with me, give me your feedback on all this. And uh, I hope that you were able to see some of the things that you might be doing that might be preventing you from just accelerating at the pace you wish to accelerate at, or, you know, to level up wherever it is that you want to level up or, you know, just to, to heal in the way that you want to heal or grow in the way you want to grow. Because these, these mistakes can be, you can undo them. You can totally shift them up. You can totally go in the other direction. It's absolutely possible. None of these things are set in stone. But now you have some new awareness, so you can do, do something about it. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, for hanging out with me on this episode of the podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens, and here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.